Something evil is here. Sweet 16. Rated R and 17. Not a bit of that parent. Sweet 16. It's like a mashup of 70s exploitation meets 80s slasher. Two of my favorite genres meeting together. This movie's pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. Um, stars Dana Kimmel, who played Chris. This is the other horror movie that she did in the 80s. She was also the uh, the final girl, one of the greatest, best screen queens. One of my favorite screen queens over the time. She plays Chris in part three, Friday the 13th. And then there's Melissa, the girl who is the star, the lead. She's like the epitome of an exploitation bitch. The girl that you lust, you want to F. The tagline in it is like she's 15 going on 25. <laughs> There's two different versions of it, and I think both of them are on YouTube. I saw the director's cut. So there's two different opening scenes. One, there's a nightmare with uh, Dana Kimball's character. And the other one's just the uh, main bitch showering nude in the opening scene while they play the credits. Anyway, it follows the slut's arrival, who's 15, Melissa, in a Texas town, and a boy she hooks up with. All she cares about is doing drugs and hooking up. One of the boys she hooks up with ends up dead. It plays out like a mystery. It takes place over the course of a few days, so it's an ongoing investigation movie with the cops involved. Instead of it having like the victims getting slaughtered in an isolated place, which kind of takes it out of the horror atmosphere of the movie and scenes. Like in one scene, they have like a town hall meeting, and you would like never see that in a Friday the Thirteenth movie. It's it's some, and it's like a scene is like. It's just a scene as fucking filler with fucking extras in the room. And anyway, so we follow along the murder mystery investigation. Dana's character is the daughter of the sheriff, script convenience. So she's in on the ongoing investigation. They can bounce dialogue off of each other in a condensed 90 minute format. She plays an amateur sleuth. Basically like Harriet the Spy type, obsessed with mystery books, and she's living her dream, basically living a murder investigation in action. And then in one scene, this is the best line of the movie, she's just like, I'm not saying for sure, but it looked like the work of a psychotic. And as she's eating like at the school lunch, it's freaking hilarious. Part of the side story is like an Indian burial ground. This is what, it involves like an Indian burial ground story and they use this Indian as a red herring. And they tell a story about these five sacred Indian knives that were stolen from the site. And you're like, this is interesting. Plot's getting a little thicker. The main suspect slash red herring is like Tonto from Indian in the Cupboard. Actually, it's some Indian who played Michael Myers in Halloween 5, from what I've seen from my research. And, um... Yeah, you're like, what the hell? He's definitely a fucking red herring. You know he's not the psychopath. It's... You're like, what the hell? It's just a fucking waste of time. They're not gonna make a freaking red skin, but the main villain then they do sketchy slow-mo for some of the death scenes like it's the 90s action movie or some like slow-mo was cutting edge at the time or something none of the people that die are like major characters but the, the script has good characters of them clashing with each other socially but not physically and now I'm going to go on to the spoilers in the final climax scene. It's at the Sweet 16 party, finally. 
And, uh, and then Melissa, the main bitch, she like sneaks off and goes skinny dipping, of course, in the moonlight. Then I don't know what the fuck happens from there. They filmed it all at night in like pitch dark. And like, you don't know who the fuck is there, what characters are there, and all these white people are like wrestling in the dark. And then it turns out Melissa's mom is the psycho who's been killing all the men around town. And, um, killing all the men that remind her of her asshole father is what they try to tell you at the end. She re their family returned back to that town and that triggered her craziness. I really didn't see it coming. There's not that many hints, but there is enough hints that you could see it coming. Like a Murder, She Wrote episode. But if the last scene was filmed better, the movie probably would have ended up a lot better, in my opinion. And, um... Yeah... They could have really filmed the last, but if they revealed the villain in, like, a more classic way and they would have brought some lights on set or something, then would, it would have probably been an 8 out of 10 movie. But I'm going to give it a 6.9 out of 10. But then at the very end, there's, like, the final shot of, like, Melissa carrying the knife. The psycho's weapon of choice. And you're thinking, was she killing people also, or is she just carrying on the psycho torch in her family now that her mom is caught or dead or whatever? Who the knows what the hell happened? Watch the movie and you try to explain it. The one that they show on YouTube, it's too dark to even see who the fuck is there or why those characters are even fucking there. I keep on saying fuck because I've been watching what pisses me off episodes way too much. I went on a binge this weekend of what pisses me off 710 episodes. Also her mom like stole her sister's identity or something. Or maybe she lived on through her sister like Norman Bates did with his mom. I don't know. It's, it's all kind of semi-confusing. Anyway, I, I pretty much gave enough thoughts on it, whether you want to see it or not. Most people probably wouldn't enjoy it, but Dana Kimmel's enough. Dana Kimmel 1983 Smoke Knot's enough reason to go and see it. This is JBM from Mr. Creep Show 09. I'm on an 80s slasher movie binge.